Hi everybody, Tori here today with another December daily video all through the month of December. I have a new video every day for my December daily and today I thought I would work on my album cover. So I have this crazy idea and it's really crazy and I'm not sure if it's going to work and I think people are probably going to think I'm ridiculous but I'm going to do it anyways because I want to and What's the worst case scenario? It looks crappy and I have to redo it. But I have this idea and it's kind of controversial. Actually, it's probably really controversial. I mean, maybe it's not. Maybe I'm making a big deal of something that's not a thing. But I think some people are going to be offended. <laughs> so, okay. Let me just explain what I'm thinking. So I got this album from Allie Edwards' site. It's the Jasmine Jones album, and it's got Jasmine's gorgeous handwriting in gold foil on it. Now, I have to be honest. When I saw this album in the shop, I loved it because it was Jasmine Jones' handwriting, and her handwriting is epic, and I love gold foil, which I still do. Like, I love the cover of this. I love the gold. However, I'm not crazy about the red. Um, I actually kind of hate it. And the more I look at it, the more I think I really do not like this red color. And I don't think I'll use it. Which is really sad because I spent a lot of money on this album. And I want to use it and I need an album for December Daily. But I hate the red. And I don't think I'm ever going to like it because in the last many years of my life, I've never liked this color red. I think it kind of looks like a burnt reddish, but it's not like, I don't even know how to explain it. It's more like a brick color and I just don't like it. And it makes me really sad because I love the gold foil of Jasmine's handwriting, but I hate the red. So I was cleaning up my studio slash craft room slash bedroom and I stumbled upon this piece of fabric that I got at the thrift store when I was looking for December uh, looking for junk journal stuff and I bought this piece of fabric for three dollars and it's actually like a big huge piece of fabric and I love it it's this really pretty green and pink print with flowers and it's kind of springy but I actually feel it kind of looks a little Christmassy to me too I don't know maybe it's not Christmassy but I think it could be um, especially with the right accents so what I'm gonna do which is gonna be completely kind of controversial and maybe a bad idea I don't know I might regret it later but I don't think so and I feel like scrapbooking and crafting and being creative is all about like going outside of your comfort zone. What I'm going to do, and please don't die or fall off your chair, I am going to cover up this album with this gorgeous fabric. So I'm going to redo the front of the album by using the fabric on top and then adding details and things to it and maybe this is like a horrible idea because I'm wasting this gorgeous album that other people probably want but I love this fabric it just makes me so happy and even when I saw it in the store I was just like this needs a really great project and I feel like this could be the really great project a December daily album wrapped in fabric okay so <laughs> If this offends you, I will not be bothered if you stop the video or leave me a comment. I get that it's not for everybody, um, but for me, I'm really excited about finding a way to use this thing that I spent money on that I don't really like the color of. Um, and I'm really excited that to, I get to use this $3 fabric that I bought that I just love and I've got tons of. And I'm excited that my December Daily album is going to look like nobody else's, which is something I really enjoy. Um, the last few years I've decorated the cover, and I feel like my cover doesn't look like anybody else's, and that's one thing that I really enjoy. So, I am going to do it. 
I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to cover it with fabric and um, hope that I'm not like seriously offending anybody. Especially one person I would like to not offend is Jasmine Jones. Because Jasmine, if you're out there, I don't think you watch my videos, but if you do watch my videos, I think you are an amazing artist and I love your handwriting. I just really hate the color. So please don't be offended that I'm covering up your handwriting. I really hope that she doesn't hate me. Oh my goodness. Okay, this may or not may not be a bad idea, but whatever, I'm just gonna move forward, I'm gonna press forward. So I'm gonna see if there's a way that I can include this gold book plate, because I think it's really pretty. So I'm gonna get some tape to cover that up. And the other thing I was thinking is that the fabric is a little bit see-through, so when you lay it over top, you can kind of see um, the color slash the gold foil underneath. So I think I'm gonna have to just do like a light coat of gesso over the album. Um, so that it doesn't pop through. So I'm gonna cover this up and I'll be right back. Okay, correction. I figured out a way to remove the book plate, um, which is probably the best solution because then I can put it on afterwards on top without having to try to like cut the fabric out around it. Um, so what I did was I just used a sharp tool to kind of pry it off. I did scrape the front of the album, um, but that is okay because I'm <laughs> gonna be covering it up anyways. Um, I'm just kind of like getting the hardware out of there and then later I'll figure out how to put it back together. Um, I've never taken off a book plate before. There's first time for everything. Okay, so I've got the hardware off there. You can see how I scraped it a little bit. And I'm gonna cover it in gesso just to make it so that the fabric doesn't see through. I don't know if you'll be able to see it on the camera, but you can kind of see a little bit maybe that I can, like once this is stretched over there, you can kind of see the gold foil underneath. So I'm hoping that by just covering it in a light coat of gesso, I'll be able to avoid that. So I will skip ahead, and I normally would put some music on and let you guys watch me do this, but um, most people said that they don't like when I play music, that they'd rather just have silence or have me skip ahead or whatever, um, or hear me talk, but I don't... I don't know what to talk about, um, so I am just going to skip ahead. Okay, so I've covered the front with gesso, and I've dried it, so it's good to go. Um, it's too, <laughs> too far to go back now, even if I did change my mind. Um, I didn't do a perfect job of, or super even job of covering it in gesso, just because um, I don't think it was really necessary. Just like simply because like it's gonna get covered and I was just trying to mute the red and mute the gold foil so it's all good so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by measuring out how much fabric I need and I'm gonna do that by laying the fabric down on my desk my desk is not super big so this is not it's a little difficult um, there's not enough space and I'm going to measure out how much fabric I need by just kind of like laying the book on top and um, cutting it so it's slightly bigger so this is the inside of the fabric and I'll just lay the book this way and I want to have some extra fabric all the way around so I'll have space to kind of like um, fold it over kind of like that so I don't need that much space. I'll probably leave about maybe two inches all around. It's just like me to start a video and not know where my scissors are. Okay, well, I have another pair, so I'll just use these. They're not fabric scissors, but that's okay. And I'm going to just, I need about two inches there, so I'm just gonna put a little slit where I need to cut the fabric, and I think, I'll actually be able to just tear it. So I actually have all this extra fabric left over that I can maybe use in the inside somehow. So you can see that I've got extra fabric 
all over so that I'll be able to tuck it over on my album. And I'll just show you kind of the general idea of what it's gonna look like. It's gonna be like that. Is that not the most beautiful thing ever? Oh my goodness. Okay, so I'm really excited because I think this is gonna look really cute. And hopefully I haven't offended people. So I'm gonna start by gluing the spine. And um, I'm gonna actually use Tombow Mono Aqua Glue. This is what I use for all of my junk journals and it's like super strong. Um, and I find that it works really well. I also find that things don't um, like wrinkle that much with it. I'm just gonna use a paintbrush to kind of make sure that it's completely coated. Um, along the spine and in those crevices. Now, if you wanted to copy me and make a book covered in fabric for your December daily, that would be an awesome idea. Um, my suggestion is that you get a fabric that's easy to work with and um, that you start with the spine first. Just because if you can get the spine good or well done, then um, you'll be able to do the rest of it pretty easily too. So I'm just going to make sure that my fabric is adhered well um, and that there's no wrinkles. And I'm also going to just use my finger to just go in the indent um, that's on either side of the spine. Just like so. And make sure that I like stretch the fabric so it's not wrinkled. But again, this glue works really well and you have some time because it takes a little while to dry to be able to stick it down. Okay. So I'm actually going to start with um, the front cover and then I'll do the back cover after. And I'm not going to do the whole entire front cover at one time. What I'm going to do is just do like, a, like an inch or so at a time. Um, lay down the glue, make sure it's nice and smooth and not too gloopy. Gloppy? Gloopy? I don't know what the word is. Um, and then just kind of work the fabric, making sure it's nice and straight and not wrinkled. And you don't want it to be too tight or else when you um, open and close the album, it'll be kind of difficult. And I'm just going to work along like that. It's fairly easy to do. Um, and I think this could work for like any album you were kind of covering. Like let's say you found an album that was a good price but you didn't like the color or you didn't like the cover or the cover had a scratch in it or something. Covering it with fabric is like a really great like solution. Now one thing I should have done with the fabric is I should have ironed out these creases. Um, I didn't think about that, so I did not do that, but you know what, six of one, half dozen of the other, um, aka, like, it'll be okay, I'm going to make it work, like Tim Gunn always says, if you're a Project Runway fan, you'll know that, he always says, make it work, so I'm hoping that by stretching the fabric and making sure it's glued down really well, I'll be able to kind of like avoid the crease causing any big issues. So that's glued down really well. I'm just gonna make sure the fabric is stretched so there's no wrinkles or creases. I'm so glad I painted the background because you can't see that red or the gold foil through. Okay, so I've got the spine done and the front and the back cover. And I'm just going to press in the areas um, on either side of the spine here a little bit um, so that it can bend. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to let that dry a little bit and then I'm going to do the insides. Okay, so it's dry and the front and back cover have had time for the glue to dry. 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish off adhering the fabric by um, adhering it to the inside of my album. Um, and I'm going to be covering up the inside afterwards, but what I want to do is, is bring the fabric in um, and cover the inside, and then later I'll cover it with the other thing that I want to cover it. So I would like to start, I think, um, with the ends. And one thing I like to do is just cut out some of the extra fabric around the corner just because when you fold this over and then you fold this over there's like a lot of extra fabric here so what I like to do and this is also too wide so I realized after I cut it that the fabric is too wide like it's gonna go it's gonna impede my book rings so I need to cut this down a little bit to so that it's only about an inch so I'm gonna start by just cutting the fabric at the top and at the bottom so it's more in line with um, the size of my album. And then around the corners, I like to just kind of cut um, like a circular shape out, kind of like that. Um, it just makes it easier so that there's less fabric at the corner when I'm folding it over. And um, you can come pretty close to where the corner is. Um, I know some people go like right up to the corner and sometimes I do, but I just, I like to leave like about a quarter inch there just so that way when I'm pulling it over, there's like a little bit of space. And I'm planning on putting book corners on these, so it's okay if it's not perfect. So I'm going to do that on all four sides. Okay. There we go. And I'm gonna start with the top and the bottom. And I'm gonna um, just put glue along here and then fold this over tight. And just hold it down so that it adheres to front cover. So I'm just gonna use my Tombow Mono Aqua Glue again. And my paintbrush to just spread it nice and um, evenly. And it's okay if it isn't perfect because it, it'll dry clear and I am planning on covering this center area anyways so I'm just gonna start in the middle of where the spine is and just make sure I adhere that down really well and stretch it so you don't want to stretch too hard or it could stretch it off the front cover but you want to stretch it like around the edges of the book working out any wrinkles all the way to the edges just like so super easy and you can see some of the fabric is like coming out like a um, pulling but you know what, again, that's okay because I'm going to be covering the bottom. So it's all good. And I like to just bend um, at the creases just to make sure it's well creased there. And I'm going to do the same thing at the bottom. So this is kind of fun because I, I was... Uh, I was brainstorming what I wanted to do for my cover this year and what I wanted to do for my album, whether I wanted to do like four by six or if I wanted to use the memory decks, which I'm using for another project, or if I wanted to use a junk journal because I'm like obsessed with those right now. Um, and I decided to go with six by eight simply because all my other December dailies are six by eight and I didn't want to have one album that was like super different from all the other ones. Um, but I was kind of sad that I didn't do decide to do a junk journal just because I love them so much. And I feel like by altering this um, album with fabric, it kind of is like giving it the vibe of a junk journal. Especially since I bought this like junk fabric at a secondhand shop for three bucks. Like, I feel like I'm getting, like, the best of both worlds. Like, a hardcover album that's the same size as all my other December dailies. And I'm getting, like, a junk journal style. A little bit, maybe, if that makes any sense. 
there we go. So I've got the fabric adhered and I'm gonna let that dry a little bit. And while I let that dry, I'm gonna go get the things I need for the book corners and also to re-put in the book plate on the spine, which I love. Just seriously, how pretty is this? I'm like actually really excited about it. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I got my hardware out and I have these book corners and I think these are Recollections brand, but I know that Tim Holtz has very similar, if not the same ones, I don't know, something like that. So I've got four different colors, I think. I'm gonna need four of them. I'm just trying to decide which color I want. Um, I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see this on the camera. So I have these silver ones. I have these like goldish tone ones. These ones are a little more copper. And these ones, I don't know what to call these. So that's like silver. This is like a dirty silver. If that makes any sense. I'm stuck. I think I want to use either this color or this color. I think I'm going to go with the goldish tone ones. Um, these ones. Just make sure that they're all the same color, which they are. And if you've never put on book corners before, they're actually super easy. The first time I did it, I was like super nervous that I was doing it wrong. Um, once you do it once, you'll know what you're doing. So you could just put them on the front cover, um, or you could put it on all four corners. And I'm gonna put it on all four corners. And what I like to do is just kind of line it up and then use some pliers just to kind of like push down the edges. And I like to put just a little dab of glue. Not that it's necessary, because if you get it tight enough, you don't really need the glue, but I feel like the glue just makes it feel like a little more secure, um, if that makes any sense at all. I don't know. It's probably unnecessary, but um, I feel like the covers are pretty thick, so having a little bit of glue is kind of like a nice way to help it. So what I typically do, and this works better on thinner books, is I use my fingers to kind of push it down a little bit to get it in place. And then I use the pliers to finish it off. And I really don't know if this is going to work because this cover is really thick. Which is a good thing because you want a thick cover because it means it's sturdier. But it just means it's a little harder for the book corners to go on but no it works um, and then you're just gonna use the pliers are these called pliers I don't even know if they are honestly I'm not a tool person um, to kind of squeeze the book corners on there and you want to make sure it's nice and tight and nice and secure This is another reason why you don't want to have a lot of extra fabric there because if you had a lot of extra fabric, it would make it harder to adhere that down. And there you go. You can kind of see it on the front cover there. So I'm going to do that on all four corners. And um, then I'll show you guys what it looks like. Okay, so check it out. There you have the metal book corners. And I love the just like little detail that they add. Like it's super cute. Um, again, I feel like it's making it look like a junk journal or like a really pretty vintage journal and it's gonna look so cute on the shelf. So I wanna add the book plate back on and the holes are there so I'll know where to stick it. Um, but one thing I was thinking about while I was working on this, 
or while I was putting the book corners on and then thinking about the book plate is that I think it would be really fun to add like a tassel or a charm. So I have one of these little brad things. It's from Tim Holtz. I don't actually know what it's called, but it's got a little, I don't know, I'll hold this up. It's got like a little ring on it and you set it in there and then the ring sticks out so that you can hang a tassel or a charm on. And what I was thinking while I was doing this was that I would put that above the metal book plate, but then if you were to have this sitting there and have a charm hanging down, it's gonna hang in front of the metal book plate, which I don't really want because I wanna be able to see the year, which I usually put in the metal book plate, but I also wanna have a charm. So what I've decided to do is I'm gonna add the book plate back on where it's supposed to go and normally the book plate goes at the top of the album kind of like this what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the book plate back on but I'm gonna flip the album so that that book plate is actually at the bottom and then that's where I'll put the date and all the information but I'll still be able to have that little book ring so that I can have a charm and a tassel and the charm or tassel will hang down but you'll still be able to see the date. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, it kind of makes sense to me. Um, so instead of using the holes where the book plate was before, because before the book plate was at the top, and I still want the book rings to go in the same place, I'm just gonna take the book plate and adhere it to the bottom of the book instead of at the top. And I'm gonna punch a hole so that I can stick my little brad in there for this book ring. And I have the We Are Memory Keepers corn crocodile, I think it's called. And this thing goes through like everything. I don't know. I'm hoping that it'll go through this really thick chipboard is my thought. I think it will. It might just do the job. So I'm going to figure out how far down I want my tassel and then kind of just squeeze this on there. It's going to be tight because the width of the album is about the same size as the width of the space in between the, the hole and the corner chopper, if that makes sense. And I'm going to try to do this in the middle. I could measure, but that seems like way too much effort. I'm just going to generally get it in the middle. And the other problem is I've got the book rings there, which are kind of getting in the way. So you kind of have to hold them off to the side while you're sticking this on. That feels like about the middle. I'm just going to pull it up a little bit because I don't want the charm that low. And then once I have it in the right place, I'm going to, with two hands, punch through the album. And actually, that was super easy. You would not believe how easy it is. Um, the hardest part was getting this on the album, but it actually punched through super easy because uh, this crocodile, is that what it's called, is like epic. And then this is kind of like a brad, so it's got those two little bunny ears on either side. I don't know if that's what you call them. Tails, bunny ears, whatevs. And I'm just going to poke them through the hole so that my little ring can be in the right place. And I'm going to push down the bunny ears or legs or whatever your tails, whatever you call them. Sorry if you can't really see that on camera. Just so it kind of looks like that. And then I've got this little ring where I can hang a tassel or a charm. So you can kind of see that. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a little tape um, just to cover and hold that down. Um, I am going to be covering it so it's not like the end of the world if it moves a little bit because I still have to cover the inside. Um, one thing that's a good thing to just keep in mind is it's a good idea to kind of add the hardware before you cover the inside just because um, otherwise you're going to be able to see it. But this way whatever I cover the inside with will cover that little hole if that makes sense. And I'm just using a little bit of masking tape. This is patterned masking tape but it's still masking tape. 
um, just to co go over that hole there and adhere that down. And then I've got that little ring there. And next, I'll add my book plate on the bottom. And I want it on the bottom so that I'll be able to have the information. So this is the hardware from before. So I'm not actually sure if I'm going to be able to figure out how to put this back together. I bet you use my corner chomper again. So I'm going to try. I think I need a pen just to mark off the spot. You could also put it like that way almost. That would be kind of cute. So it goes this way, like up and down, vertical. But I'm thinking it might be cute to put it horizontally. And then um, you wouldn't have to put your date sideways. Oh, actually, that's super cute. Okay, I'm totally putting it horizontally instead of vertically. It, like, literally just fits. So, who knows? Maybe I'm completely screwing this up. But... It'll be okay. So I'm just going to use the pen. Doesn't want to mark on the fabric. Just to mark a spot for the holes. And I could use an awl or something to poke the holes, but I actually think that um, because this is so thick, it's going to be really difficult. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and use my corner chomper again. Maybe? I mean, I went through the cover one time. Why not two more times? Just need to get that extra. Some of the chipboard is just stuck in the hole there. And I have the dots that I've drawn on there so that I know where to poke the hole or punch the holes. So hopefully I can just line this up. Okay, there we go. So I've punched two holes for my book plate. Hopefully they're in the right place. <laughs> it looks like they are. And then I've got this hardware that came with the album. And I'm just going to stick it through. There's like a front and a back piece. But I think I can use my crocodile, if that's what it's called, to just uh, secure that. It's cute. Look at that. I've got the book plate on there at the bottom, which is really fun. So I can put the date there and then I can hang a tassel at the top. Now what I need to do is do the inside cover. And I already have an idea. Um, so I'm going to go grab what I need for it. And my idea is that I have tons of old books like this that are just the pages, like not the covers, because I've taken the covers off for... Um, junk journals and I want to repurpose this page, these vintage pages so what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is I'm going to kind of use the pages to adhere to the inside of this cover like kind of modge podge it down um, and I'm gonna actually tear the pages a little bit because I don't want them to be like 
perfect. Like right now they're kind of perfect so you can kind of see them all. But I'm thinking that instead I'm going to kind of rip them like so and kind of use them to modge podge all over the inside so it kind of has this like vintage book page idea. Okay, so now that I have all the pages ready to go, I'm going to adhere them down to the inside covers. And I was debating whether to use like the nice clean side, um, but I think I'm going to use the side that's like been ripped from the book so it's not perfect. And I have some multi matte medium here, and I'm just going to kind of create like a little sandwich by adhering matte medium to the page. And the nice thing about this is if you get any like all over the place, it actually um, dries clear. And I'm not trying to be perfect about how I stick it down, down or anything. I just wanna stick the page. down and then I'll do the next one and I'm just gonna keep doing that until I've covered the entire inside okay so the inside is sufficiently covered and I'm just going to finish it by putting a light coat of the matte medium over the entire thing okay so I've this really well I'm happy with it so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually let it dry overnight like up like this where the book is bent um, that way it will dry really well and um, I'll be able to get more use out of it um, like bending the pages back and forth and stuff so I think that's it for me today I've showed you how to destroy a perfectly good um, photo album. Um, I've showed you how to add fabric, how to relocate the book plate, um, add a little binder ring so you can add a tassel later. I showed you how to add book corners and how to cover the inside of your album with scrap paper or leftover book pages. And that's it for me today. I'm going to let this dry and then tomorrow I'm going to work on the next part of this album which is probably going to be my cover page or my tassel. I can't wait. So I'll see you then. Don't forget I have a new video every day during the month of December. So if you want to make sure you don't miss any of those videos, check back daily. Make sure you're subscribed and you can even hit the little bell next to the subscription or next to the subscribe button and it will notify you whenever a new video is posted. So thanks so much for joining me. I hope you have a lovely day. See ya!